Good evening. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. There's a popular Christmas song that says, uh, the song's titled, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. That hasn't happened yet, and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen until a little bit later this evening. But the first line of that song, uh, that song begins, the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> That's pretty appropriate for this evening. The weather outside is, is, is pretty nasty, but it's great that we can be uh, here and worship together. We're also live streaming this service for the first time, so hopefully that's going to work out all right. We're really gra- grateful for, for those who've worked behind the scenes to help that happen, and we're grateful for those that are joining with us online that couldn't be with us here in person this evening. It is a very different year, and we all know that, and this is a different Christmas Eve service because we've never had a Christmas Eve service here in the Center of Hope before uh, because this building opened up at the end of January this, this year, earlier this year. But even though it's, it's a very different year, even though this is a, a different setting and a different Christmas Eve service, we really hope it captures a lot of the traditions of Christmas, but also the, the spirit of Christmas and that we open our hearts in a very real uh, and deep way to the Lord tonight, not only praising him, but receiving what he has for all of us as well. Hopefully when you came in tonight, you received uh, three things, two for sure, a candle and communion elements, and then also a bulletin if you wanted a bulletin. The, we will be celebrating communion this evening, later on in the service. The, we have... Um, we, we cannot have our normal uh, delicious bread that we usually have here at the church because of everything going on now, but we have these prepackaged communion elements. There's actually two seals on top. There's two tabs you pull, the first one for the bread and then the second one for the juice. So just be aware of that when that time comes in the service. And also the candles, when we pass candlelight to one another, we'll have our ushers uh, go down the aisles. The person whose candle is lit, so at first that will be the ushers, uh, keep your candle upright please, and the person lighting from that would tilt, tilt your candle, that keeps wax from getting all over the place. And when we're, um, there was concern from some folks about blowing the candles out and spreading germs and all that, so um, we're asking you when you blow the candles out, if you have a mask on, just kind of gently lift the lift mask and blow it out, a little poof would be fine. If you don't have a mask on, when you blow it out, just a little poof would be fine, and uh, we'll blow the candles out that way, and so hopefully not have any issues along those lines. We are here tonight to lift up the name of Jesus and to be lifted up ourselves. Before we begin our worship, I just want to share with you a couple other brief announcements. This Sunday, we're only having one service at 10 o'clock. Instead of our typical services at 9, here, and 11 in the traditional sanctuary, We're having one service at 10 o'clock here in the Center of Hope. Uh, The Friends Singing Group will be presenting an inspiring Christmas concert. And so uh, we invite you to join us for that and invite others as well. It should be a very inspirational morning. One service at 10 o'clock. And also, we're grateful for all those who donated poinsettias tonight uh, to beautify our sanctuary here. If you donated poinsettias, uh, feel free to take it with you following the service tonight or you could get it on Sunday or Monday as well. And we do have inserts in the back uh, listing all those who's, uh, in whose memory and honor they were given, and so we're really grateful for those. If you do not have a, a church home, know that you're always welcome to be a part of our church family as well. Again, we're here tonight to glorify the Lord, to adore Him, and also to be lifted up and drawn to Him ourselves. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and love. We're we're thankful for each and every person who can be here this evening. We're thankful for those that are joining with us virtually as well. Lord, we pray that we would open our hearts to you. We pray that you would be honored and glorified in our time together. We We pray that we would pour out our gratitude for the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior. Lord, on this Christmas Eve 2020, we pray that we would open our hearts to you anew, let you in, let you in in a new way, in a deeper way, or possibly even let you in for the first time. 
Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here that you, the name of Jesus, would be praised and we would be drawn closer to you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again to our Christmas Eve service. We're going to start off by um, singing a, a song that deserves, that God deserves. God is greater than any sickness, greater than any illness, greater than any financial problems, greater than any relationship problems. God is the reason why each and every one of you are here right now. God is the reason why you're watching this at home. God is the reason why we are going to be worshiping tonight. So please stand and join us for this opening song.
please be seated. If you consider yourself a child, come on up. I'm going to have you sit here in the front row. Come on, Charlie, sit in here. I think Ireland grew up over my way. Hi, Charlie. Oh, hi. You're a dude? Yep, that's a dude. forget anyone. Charlie, can you get up there? Yep. There you go, buddy. <laughs> All right. Were you guys excited for Christmas? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite thing about Christmas? Presents. presents. Jordan, Jude's like, presents. He's honest, right? What else is, what else is your favorite? Everything. Everything. Being with your family. Yeah. Going to church. Going to bed early, getting up early. Does anybody get up early here? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I bet you if I was to ask Mr. Jeff right now what his favorite part of Christmas, one of his favorite parts would be, what would he say? He would say sugar because Mr. Jeff loves sugar. And one of his favorite sugar things is this. Do you know what this is? M&M's. Yep, <laughs> it is M&M's. You know what happens every Christmas? I fill up our Christmas candy dish for red and green M&Ms. I fill it up, and guess what happens by the next day? They're gone. Nope, Santa doesn't eat them. Mr. Jeff eats them. Doesn't fail. I fill it up again the next day. He does. He eats them all, Jordy. He eats them all. I fill it up again because I always buy three or four bags. Guess what happens? They're gone. I fill it up again. They're gone. And you know what the number one thing is, is he says to me after? My belly hurts because I ate too many M&Ms. So what do you think these M&Ms have to do with Christmas? Not that just that they're Mr. Jeff's favorite. But the colors? Because Christmas is very colorful, right? The taste? God, in the Bible it does say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, I want to read you a little poem, okay? And every time you eat M&Ms, I want you to remember this little poem. As you hold these candies in your hand and turn them, you will see. What's on an M&M? An M. An M. The M becomes a W. If you turn it upside down, the M becomes a W. And if you turn it to its side, come on, Jordy. If you turn it to its side, it becomes an E. If you turn it to its other side, it becomes a three. 
So as you hold these candies in your hand and turn them, you will see. He's okay, Jude. He's okay. He's okay. And turn them, you will see. The M becomes a W and an E and then a three. They tell the Christmas story. It's one I'm sure you know. It took place in a stable long, long time ago. The E is for the east where the star shone so bright. The M is for the manger where baby Jesus slept at night. The three is for the three wise men. Oops, sorry. The three wise men bearing gifts. They say they came. W is for the worship. Hallelujah. Praise his name. So as you eat these candies or share them with a friend, remember the meaning of Christmas. It's a love story that never ends. So on behalf of our church, we have a little pack of M&Ms for you. And I put the little poem, I put the little poem on there too so you can remember. All right, Jordy, come here. We're going to say a little prayer. All right, let's say a little prayer. Come here, come pray with me. Come here. All right, dear Jesus, thank you so much for all that you do for us and for sweets and candies. But most of all, thank you for your son Jesus that came to this earth for each and every one of us. Merry Christmas. Amen. You want to help me, Jordan? Help me hand these out. All right, you guys can go back to your seat, but come get one of these. Okay, come, come. Nope. Here, help me. Well, thank you, Miss Tiff, for sharing that. And we just love our children here at Winners Blue Night Methodist Church. I'm glad the kids came up and they were able to get that um, awesome gift and learn a little bit about the story and why we are worshiping this season. So please stand and join us for a little bit more time of worship, worshiping our Lord and Savior and our God who's brought to us this day.
adore you, Lord. your voice and sing it out.
seated. of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a king wearing a magnificent crown. No, Dad, that's not it. Oh, really? L let me try it again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a powerful, well-trained soldier. No, Dad, you did it again. That's not right. Okay, uh, how about this? And this will be a sign for you. You will find a democratically elected president. What? No. A trendy motivational speaker. No way. A big tech CEO. A movie star. Time traveling cyborg. No, no, none of those are right. The shepherds we couldn't find any of those. Okay then, little Miss Know It All. What did they find? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, that's right, a baby. Does that even make sense? A, a baby is totally helpless. Yeah, but if Jesus didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. then he would have known what it was like to grow up. Ah, oh, but wait, why did he have to grow up? That's easy to save us. Ah, well then that means that the best part about Christmas is... The baby. Right, the baby. Oh, well, I guess it's time you get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. No, we're not done with the story. Okay, just a little longer. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who
The dad said to the little girl, I forget to turn on the microphone every time, and this will be a sign for you. There will be a powerful king. And she said, that's not right. And she, he said, well, there will be a powerful, well-trained soldier. And she said, no, that's not right. And we'll be there, be a president, and that's not right. And a trendy motivational speaker or a big tech CEO or uh, a movie star. And, and she knew that none of those things were right. She said, you know, no, Daddy, it's, it's none of those things. Nearly every year for quite a few years now, we've received at least one Christmas card or more with a, a saying on it, a quote by Max Lucado. And Max Lucado said this, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was forgiveness, God sent us a Savior. He came in grace and truth. The little girl on the video got it right. God came as a baby. God came to earth as a baby to save us, to save all people. That's the good news, the, the great news of Christmas. He didn't have to, but he did. There's a popular uh, praise song from the last couple years called Reckless Love. And the, the chorus of that song, which many of you know, says the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. God didn't have to, but he did. Came in grace and truth, knocking on the door of our hearts and knocking on the door of our lives. There's a much older song that speaks of the one who came and why we adore him. Tiff alluded to this with the children at the song, We Three Kings. We're not gonna, I'm not going to go through the whole song, but the verses that really say who Jesus was. Again, not a, not a big tech CEO or a motivational speaker, but he was a king. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer of I, incense owns a deity nigh. That, that Jesus is God the Son, God in the flesh. Prayer and praising all men raising, worship him, God most high. Myrrh is mine, it's bitter perfume. Breathes a life of gathering gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying. Myrrh was used in ancient times as an, an embalming fluid, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. And then the last verse says, Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God, and sacrifice. King and God and sacrifice. Jesus did not came to come in any of those other ways that was mentioned in the video. He came as a baby, but a baby who was a king, a, a servant king, who was God in the flesh, and the sacrifice for all the sins of the world, including all of ours. And then the chlor or the last verse of the the end of that song says, Alleluia, Alleluia, earth to heaven replies. Hopefully that's our reply tonight and each and every day. Earth to heaven replies, Alleluia, which means praise the Lord, that we praise the Lord. Our theme this year for Advent or for our worship service tonight is let adoring spirits let him in. Our theme for Advent throughout this year has been let him in. Let adoring spirits let him in. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. <clears throat> Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. Let adoring spirits let him in. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The Apostle John distinguishes here between those that let Jesus in 
and those who do not let him in. Some people, there are some, where it's slamming the door in his face. But most are a little more polite about it. Maybe not slamming the door in Jesus' face, but just really not letting him into our hearts and letting him in to our lives. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. God's word, God is grace, God is love, and God's word is truth. It's always true. God always gets it right. The little girl in the video also got it right when she said, the story isn't finished yet. You know, her dad said, hey, you know, it's getting late. And she said, well, dad, the, the story isn't finished yet. The Christmas story wasn't finished yet, and our story is not finished yet. Some of us may be farther along than others. There are little ones here tonight that are less than a year old, and there are some folks here that are quite a few more years older than that. But none of our stories are finished yet. How do we respond? Let adoring spirits let him in. This year in Advent, the different weeks, we, we looked at let loving hearts let him in. Let all the world let him in. Let meek souls let him in. Tonight, adoring spirits. To adore means to worship. It means to love deeply. It means ardent devotion to cher cherish, to treasure, to love. Let adoring spirits let him in. We sang at the beginning of the service tonight that the chorus, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. And, and our question is, do we and will we? I, I came across a Facebook post a few times the last week or so in this season, and some of you probably saw it as well. Can we show this picture here? I, I thought it was pretty good. It says, Mary, exhausted, having just gotten Jesus to sleep, is approached by a young man who thinks to himself, what this girl needs is a drum solo. So I thought it was funny anyway. The little drummer boy, we're not exactly sure that's what he had in mind. You know, little drummer boy is a fictional story, but it really does it's a great example of adoration. Uh, let adoring spirits, let him in. In that song of the little drummer boy, what? He says, you know, I don't have anything really to offer except for himself. I played my best for him. I, I gave my best for him. That's what adoration and really worship is all about. Giving our best for the Lord. How do we respond? How will we respond? Think about the shepherds. They were one of the lowliest class of people in that society. The shepherds represent kind of like every man, every person. They're representative that the Savior came with the angels speaking to the shepherds and the shepherds being one of the first witnesses of the birth of the Messiah, that God came for all people. In Luke chapter 2, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Good news of great joy for all people. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger, and then a a whole multitude of the heavenly host joined the angel, praying to God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. When the angels left them, I asked, How will you respond? How will I respond to God's love, to Jesus, the greatest gift of all, the gift of God's love, the good news, the great news? The shepherds, they responded. They said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has told us about. And then when they saw the baby... We read, they, when they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning the child. And then we read, Mary treasured up all these things. But verse 20 of Luke chapter 2, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The shepherds, how will we respond? Hopefully like the shepherds. They acted on what they heard and they acted on what they knew. And when they, when they found out that this was true, they worshiped. 
and they praised God and they were different. The wise men, the wise men were upper class intellectuals from another country, another nationality. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked, where is he who is born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and we have come to worship him. They knew, these wise men, 2,000 years ago, they knew that the, the only appropriate response to the Messiah, to a, a king being born, the, the king of kings, was worship. About 33 years later, Mary Magdalene, after Jesus, you know, Jesus grew up, he taught, he served, he healed, he suffered, he was tortured, he died a horrendous death on the cross, but he rose again. And when he rose again and he appeared to Mary Magdalene, who had a very colorful past life, when he appeared to Mary Magdalene, she clung to him in worship, in praise, in adoration. Shortly after that, the Thomas, known as Doubting Thomas, the disciple, Thomas gets a bad rap a lot of time. Yeah, even though he doubted, he just wanted to be sure. He, he wanted to know that he was giving his life to the truth, the one who really was the Messiah. And when Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, you know, put your hands in my hands, the nail holes in, in, in my side, Thomas's response was what? My Lord and my God. Thomas responded with worship. Throughout eternity, throughout eternity, Jesus will be eternally worshipped. From Revelation chapter 7, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and other passages of scripture said there were thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000 angels praising the Lord. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. How do we respond now? That's how some of the some people responded to Jesus back then, and how in eternity the angels and all of God's people will respond for eternity. But how will we respond now tonight, the rest of 2020, and as we move into 2021, Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, understanding what God has done, realizing what God has done, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We worship in church. Ideally, Christians worship with other Christians in person. Ideally, we know that some people can't, through, you know, throughout the centuries, some people have not been able to because of health reasons or maybe some other reasons, but God calls us people to worship together. If we can't and we can worship, we can worship also on our own. We can worship with others, but worship is more than just on Sunday morning or on a Christmas Eve service on a special occasion. Worship is a way of life. Worship is a way of life. The little drummer boy, I gave my best to him. Rick Warren says it this way, Surrendering to God is the heart of worship. It is the natural response to God's amazing love and mercy. We give ourselves to God in love because, as the Bible said, because he first loved us. True worship happens when you give yourself completely to God. Offering yourself to God is what worship is all about. We offer ourselves to God when we're gathered here in worship. If we're driving down the road in our car, listening to praise music and singing, and we're, that's, a, that's a way to worship as well. But worship is also giving ourselves completely to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Let adoring spirits let him in. When Jesus met the woman at the well, 
he said to her, A time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. According to God's truth and in the spirit. Adoring him. Our words and our actions in church on Sunday, on special occasions, and each and every day. When Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? What? He said two things. Love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's worship. Loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he said the second is, like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God first and foremost, and live it out each and every day. In James 3, we read, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. This is in a passage of the Bible talking about our tongues and how the tongue can be a fire and you know, can set a whole world ablaze. But he's saying in here that basically our, our words and our praise should match our actions and our lifestyle. Our talk equal, equals our walk. Not just saying we love God and not just singing praises, but living it out, giving our best for him each and every day. In Advent 2020, the second week, let loving hearts let him in. Receiving God's gift of love, loving God and loving others. Let all the world let him in, that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life for all people, the whole world. Last week, last Sunday, let meek souls let him in. Meek, biblically, is not weak, it's not wimpy. It involves gentleness and it involves humility, but it's, it's like a, a, a wild horse who is tamed. The power and the strength is still there, it's just control. It's controlled power. It's Meek means submitting all that we are to a higher authority, to the authority, to God's authority. Submitting all that we are to him. And then tonight, let adoring spirits let him in. A life of worship. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. In ancient times, that was a sign of a close personal relationship. Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. Our family makes a, a Christmas ornament every year for our church family. And this year, uh, our daughter-in-law, Jackie, made nearly all of them. And we were really grateful for that. And there's some on the back table if you didn't get one yet. But that can serve as a reminder. On it, it says, let him in. And there's a key, and the key has a heart on it the key to our heart, to let Jesus in that makes all the difference. Let adoring spirits let him in. No better time than Christmas Eve to open the door of our heart for the first time or to open the door of our heart anew to our Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, this has been such a difficult year in so many ways for so many people. This is a, a pretty abnormal Christmas Eve. But that first Christmas was pretty abnormal as well. God coming to earth as a child, as a helpless baby. But Lord, you did it. You did it because of your never-ending, overwhelming, reckless love for each and every person. Oh Lord, help us to respond by letting you in, opening the door of our hearts to all you are, to all you have for us. Let us give ourselves to you anew. Lord, in this time of Holy Communion, we pray that it would truly serve as a symbolic testimony of worship, of praise, of adoration, and not just for tonight, but each and every day of our lives as followers of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's in his name we pray. 
Amen. As we do prepare for communion tonight, communion is a time of remembrance. And for those that are at home, well, we hope they have some bread and grape juice or wine that they could use as well to join with us in this sacrament. It's a time of remembrance. It's a time of gratitude. And it's also a time of dedication. Remembering Jesus, not just his birth, his first coming, but also his life and his death and his resurrection and that he is coming again one day. That he is King of kings and Lord of lords and he will reign forever. It's remembering Jesus his love, his sacrifice, his, all the blessings he pours out into our lives. It's a symbolic testimony of gratitude, of thankfulness, of being so grateful for all that God has done. And then it's a symbolic testimony of dedication, either rededicating our lives to the Lord or even dedicating our lives to the Lord for the first time receiving his gifts. The invitation to participate, and just a reminder, there are, there are two little uh, flaps on here to, to peel off, first the bread and then, then the cup. The invitation to participate in Holy Communion in our church, you do not need to be a member of this church. You do not need to be a member of any church, but we do invite you to participate if you desire to receive God's love. Live in that love and then live out that love for others each and every day. At this time, I'd invite you to just take a few moments of silence and come before the Lord privately, personally, in prayer. The word says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a like manner after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks to God, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. If you haven't already, if you would just take the wafer and know that this represents the body of Christ broken for us, please take and eat. Now if you would take the juice and peel back the seal and know that this grape juice represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for each and every one of us because of his great, great love for each and every person. Please take and drink. Dear Lord, we thank you. We adore you. We give ourselves to you. Lord, help us to open the door of our hearts, not just to crack and leaving the chain lock on, not just enough to whisper through but Lord, help us to open up the door to our hearts the entire way. To experience you in a new and a deeper way. 
that we would be among all of those who let our adoring spirits let you in, live with you, live for you, live in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the love, in the joy, in the peace, and in the hope that you give each and every day. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. At our church for decades, and I'm guessing for even a, a century, nearly two centuries, on Christmas Eve, we always conclude our service by singing together Silent Night. And as we sing together this evening, before we sing together, I would just like to share with you again some brief instructions. Uh, the ushers, I will light my candle from the Christ candle, and then our ushers will come forward and light from my candle. Just remember, if your candle is lit, please hold it upright and let the person, if, if you're passing the light to the person beside you, let them tilt their candle off of yours. We think that it will be easy to social distance and still pass the light of Christ. Also, when all the candles are lit, the lights will be turned down, and we ask you to stand as we sing Silent Night together. And at the uh, beginning of verse 4 of Silent Night, we'll invite you to raise your candle up as a symbolic testimony of the light of Jesus shining in us and through us. At the end of the song, um, we'll conclude our service with the benediction. Again, we ask you to just gently blow the candle out and make sure if you have a mask on, don't catch on fire. That's an obstacle that none of us are used to dealing with. This has been a tradition in our church and, and churches all over our country and all over our world for many, many years. And even though so many people can't be together now and gathered with family and friends and church family, we know that when we sing Silent Night together in this way, we are actually joining together with believers literally all over the world. At this time, let us prepare our hearts to sing together.
May we receive the benediction. The scripture says, to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. That is our true spiritual act of worship. The scripture says, as we hold on to the word of life, will shine as stars in the universe, in the, in the world around us, in the darkness around us, will shine like stars in the universe as we hold on to and live out the word of life. And the scripture says, let your light, the light of Christ living in us and shining through us, let your light so shine before others that they will see your good works, that they will see your life and give glory to our Father in heaven. Let adoring spirits let him in tonight, tomorrow, and each and every day as followers, as worshipers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us this evening. Again, just a reminder, you can just place your candle in the back or if you want to take it with you as a reminder, uh, um, as a symbolic token of re remembrance of this night, that's fine as well. And just a reminder again that on Sunday we'll have one service at 10 o'clock, an inspirational uh, Christmas concert by the singing, singing group friends. We hope in spite of everything going on that you truly have a blessed Christmas. Thanks again for coming.